Welcome back. In today's video, we have a couple of submissions from Anumanu, and it's about an apple and a bird. So let's jump into it. Okay, I would like to focus on only one thing in this entire video, and that's color palette, meaning the number of colors being used in an image. For example, if I take this apple and I create a palette from the sprite, you will notice that we have way, way too many green colors in this image, especially since it's only a single object. Now, why is that important? When you animate a certain object, the more colors you have in the image, the more difficult it will be to animate that said object. If you have too many colors, it can get out of head pretty quickly. So, for example, if we take this bird and we try to animate it, again, I'll try to recreate the palette from the sprite, you can see that there are so many blue tones and orange tones in this image, which don't read well. So on one side, it's a practical issue because too many colors simply means that you will have to multiply your workload by a lot. So that's the first issue about having too many colors. So the first reason why we should limit our color palette as much as possible was more practical one. What's the second reason? Well, it's stylistic choice, meaning pixel art is a style of art. And nowadays there's a lot of discussion on what exactly is and isn't pixel art. Way in the past, pixel art was simply game art because that's the main way how you were able to create pixels on the screen and replicate them. So it was a technology issue. Nowadays, it's simply a form of art. And you might ask, okay, what kind of form of art? Well, it's a form of art that, as the name implies, we focus on each individual pixels. So if you want to appreciate pixel art as a style, you have to be able to differentiate each single pixel in a sprite. So if you are not worried about animating an object, meaning you don't care about how large the color palette is, then as another guideline, you can say, okay, can I differentiate each and every single pixel in the image? So for example, on this apple, can you really say that you can differentiate each and every single color on a first glance? Personally, I'm not able to. And for example, if I zoom in here, do you see this pixel here? Let's take the reddish color. So this pixel here, do you see how close it is uh, when it comes to its value to the neighboring colors? So it's only a bit more saturated than these colors next to it. So even if I zoom out the image and I use the bucket tool to paint all on this specific tone and uh, basically replace it, it with this tone, Look, do you see the difference? There's almost no difference. So as a guideline, you should be able to remove all those unnecessary colors in this way. If you remove the color, if you don't really notice it on a large scale, and the only way to see if it's, on, if it's gonna work like that, you have to zoom out a bit from the image. And if you cannot see the difference, then that color should be removed. Why? Well, because pixel artists love to appreciate pixel art. They like to see myself included single pixels i like to differentiate each color from one another and i like to see every single pixel if we have too many colors they become blurred if we start to strip out colors we will start to appreciate more the pixel art as a style so this is like a subjective point of view so you can take it or leave it so i will give you one exercise which will help you out in pushing out smaller color palettes because Honestly speaking, the apple looks great. So if I blur it out, let's say, you can clearly see this as an apple. And I can see that you understand the 3D form well, and you know how to shade. Even if I look at this bird over here, I can see that you know how to shade, but the same thing applies. There are just too many colors on this image. Look how many blue tones. So I will challenge you to practice pixel art in one specific way. Limit your color palette to two or three tones of a color, and this will force you to stop softening up the shadows. This will make your shadows look harsh, but you will have to train your eyes to get used to that, and then you can introduce more tones if you really want. So how would I do that for this apple? First, I would try to locate two or three colors that I wanna keep. For example, on this green color of the apple, I need one tone for light and one tone for the shadow and then we can maybe use one extra if we want as an outline or maybe as a highlight so i can see that the, the larger shape here is this 
light tone and I like it a lot. So I will push it over this specific tone and you will see what will happen. I will duplicate this image and I will push it just a few places. And on the rest of these, I will use a shadow tone. Okay, there we go. So I have removed most of the colors. And now I, what I can do is I can darken the shadow tone if I want. So I can take this and now you can pick pretty much any one of these shadow tones. It doesn't matter. It can be even this one, especially since the surrounding is very dark, like a dramatic scene. So now we have two major tones with a couple of extra, which I'll get to right away. But you have one major color for the light and one color for the shadow. Now, if I remove these two colors for highlights, this is all you would get. Now you can see that the shading overall is great on this image. You know, we can probably fix it here or there, but it's not big of a deal. I can see that you understand the 3D form as well, but you can see the before and after. Both look good, but the second one, you can see the clear distinction between pixels. And that's one of the subjective things about pixel art, which makes it pixel art, in my opinion. Now, I'm not uh, the type of guy who's gonna say that you shouldn't be using transparency layers if you want to, especially in games, especially on the practical side. You can do whatever you want to if you think it's gonna make your image look better. But based on both of these images, if you wanna uh, go more towards the roots of the pixel art, you will have to limit your color palette as much as possible. So. I repeat my challenge to you is remove as many colors as possible and this would apply on the stem of the apple as well we have more tones here so for example i would take only uh, one tone for for the light and maybe one tone for the shadow let's say this one there we go and same goes for the leaves we would use the same tones and now from this color palette i would i will have to recreate this in a new document now look at this. We have only a few colors. Oh, look, there's still a couple of hidden ones on the image. So the way we can find them is I can paint them and locate them by, let's say, putting white. Do you see? They're so similar that some colors are so similar that we aren't able even to locate them. So, so that's one. And let's see, we have another one, I believe. So let's find it. Is it this one or is it the other one? Yeah, so it's this one over here. See how they're similar? I mean, even if you have a very color accurate screen, it's very difficult to see these things. And there we go. So now we have two colors for the apple and two for the stem. And you see how the color palette is way smaller. And, you know, it's a stylistic choice, to be honest. So the end decision will be up to you. But I think that if you just want to take one thing from this, I would say limit your color palette. So before I give you one last final tip, I would like to repeat. One is the practical reason why we want to limit our color palette be because of animating and so on. Second is simply stylistic choice. So if you really like pixel art, you want to appreciate each and every single pixel. So there's that, those, those are the two things. And again, I repeat, I'm not against using transparency layers and modern techniques and lighting and effects, etc. It's simply pixel art as a style. And personally, I like it in the purest form without any lighting effects, but I can also appreciate when you are using different lighting effects. Okay, so what is the final tip? Well, for students who come from more traditional background, be it digital or actually traditional, where we usually use soft gradations for the shadows. And it's a bit difficult to transition to pixel art style, which is uh, which uses a bit more harsh tones, so to speak. Again, you can mitigate this by using more colors and anti-aliasing and etc. But the way you can transition your consciousness to this side is blur tool. So once you have challenged yourself to use only two or three tones for a specific color in the image, for example, two tones for the green and brown here, then you can use the blur tool, which is here on the right, and just go over your image a few times. And you will see that if you blur out the transition between the shadow and light tone, you can sort of see what happens in usual to the digital. Of course, it's not the same. It uses 
way more colors than you have used here but it's a nifty trick how you can start to slowly see okay so this type of clean line between the light and shadow would sort of look like this if i soften it up with like the soft brush or the blur tool do you see where i'm going this with so i found it that some students found this specific tip helpful so i hope it will be of use to you as well so the same principle that we have used here on the apple you can use here on the bird as well you definitely have too many colors if you look at the blue tones and the orange tones the same principle applies i hope to see more submissions from you and as always enjoy relax and have fun